استغفر الله اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين مرئي الخلائق اجمعين وصلى الله على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين حبيب اله العالمين ابي القاسم محمد <تصفيق> على اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله ولي الذين امنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات الى النور الذين كفروا اولياءهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور الى الظلمات اولئك اصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون صلوات قال امير المؤمنين في صفه الزهاد كانوا قوما من اهل الدنيا وليسوا من اهلها فكانوا فيها كمن ليس منها قلوا فيها بما يبصرون وبادروا فيها ما يحذرون قلب ابناء ابدانهم بين ظهراني اهل الاخره يرون اهل الدنيا يعذمون موت اجسادهم هم اشد وهم اشد اعذاما لموت قلوب احياهم thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing us together to uh, remember the uprising and sacrifice of amir hussein alayhi salam and the qiyam and uprising of imam husain alayhi salam can be looked at in many ways non muslims would look at it as a as an uprising of the truth against falsehood any conscience people of conscience look at it that way haq alayhi batil haq in in against batil truth against falsehood and forces of oppression constitute falsehood falsehood cannot be with justice truth cannot be with oppression so oppression showed that they were false they were wrong and since imam husain alayhi salam stood against oppression therefore he was the truth embodiment of truth and people look at this event in history and have decided the conscience the human conscience has decided long ago this debate now is i mean it's not needed really human beings when they read history whenever they stumble upon the events of karbala everyone decides for himself for the struggle of blood over the sword victory of the blood over the sword it was a struggle of the oppressed against the oppressors and for from the viewpoint of islam Imam Hussein represented the Islam itself basically he was Islam Islam at that point in time meant Imam Hussein alayhi salam because he was the direct descendant of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam so he was he was the he was knowledge himself so he was in every way a manifestation of Quran living quran that's why he had so much respect in the muslim nation at that time the the shahadat and the martyrdom of imam hussein alayhi salam was an act of oppression committed by the forces of yazid umayyad forces who forced a lot of people including many from kufa to join the army and go and fight and kill imam hussein alayhi salam basically they uh, came against imam hussein alayhi salam and uh, the the oppression that they committed speaks for itself the zulm the oppression the injustice done in in karbala speaks for itself so for human beings to decide which side was right and wrong they just have to look at history itself what really happened and it will speak for itself We don't need for example for an outsider i'm saying we don't need for example a hadith from prophet muhammad saying that for example hussein was haq or who was batil the actions committed by 
Mayyad forces against Imam Hussein are enough argument in itself, enough proof. Any uh, independent observer to see that, yes, uh, it was an act of aggression against Hussein, who, who was peaceful and he did not wage a war. He did force Hussein to give allegiance. And Hussein refused, which is the right of every human being to say, no, I, for example, I don't agree with this government. It's okay. That's every right. Today's vocabulary says, for example, if you don't want to vote for someone, you're your right. It's all right. You know. can't say, okay, I won the election. You didn't vote for me, so you go to jail. <clears throat> what kind of an argument is that? Now you go beyond that. Obviously, in Islamic context, <clears throat> issue of allegiance was more than giving a vote. And from Islamic viewpoint, from our viewpoint, legitimacy of an Islamic ruler, a divine ruler, does not come from people. Legitimacy of a ruler, we call an imam, <clears throat> does not come from vote of the people. Not come from that. I've discussed some of that before. Uh, and we believe that Allah is the sovereign. Allah is, God himself is sovereign. He has the ultimate power. And he knows and why he created everyone. And he has a plan for this universe. And he has sent books and prophets from Adam all the way down to our times. Therefore, he can claim allegiance. Ultimately, he has the right because he's all knowing, because he's the one who listens and answers our prayers. He's the provider of everything, sustenance. He, he knows what is best. He's, he's the just one. He has provided. He has said in, in many places in the Quran, places, he talks about justice. And actually beyond justice, he talks about compassion, he talks about mercy, he talks about forgiveness, love, and all that, right? So, uh, sovereignty, which we call in Islamic terms, the wilayat. <clears throat> wilayat and authority, ultimate authority is with God himself. People do not give religious, uh, divine authority to anyone by by supporting someone yes people can come together and show their support by doing what we call bayat we don't have a right term for it allegiance probably one way by giving allegiance in the islamic vocabulary we understand that allegiance means that yes we accept what god has given told us to do we accept our responsibility to follow and obey you the the create the clear clear uh, example of that is in the event of Ghadir himself itself, the event where the Prophet of Islam Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, Muhammad wa, he made the announcement of succession of Imam Ali. He did not ask people who they wanted him to appoint. He did not ask the people if they agreed with his decision to appoint Ali. He did not ask people to vote for Ali, for example. Just as Prophet Muhammad was made a prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah did not ask the creation, do you want me to appoint Muhammad as, your, as my messenger? Do you agree with my decision? Do you vote for him? He did not, because it is the exclusive right of Allah to send his prophets. The same way the, the event of Ghadir was an announcement not an election, it was an announcement. The Prophet asked the people, do you be, bear witness that Allah is your Lord? People said, yes. And the Prophet asked the next question, do you bear witness? Shahadat dete, do you bear witness? That Allah has more authority over you than yourself. And I, his messenger, have more authority over you then you have upon yourself, people said, of course. You are appointed by God as his last messenger. You have more velayat and authority over us than we do upon ourselves. Your decision will be final for our own decisions. Your decision will take precedence, right? Third question, the third thing Prophet said was not a question. It was an announcement. 
said this, so therefore, whoever accepts Allah and me as his Mawla must accept Ali here with me as his Mawla, his master. Then he started making dua, prayer. Oh Allah, Allahumma wali man walahu wa adi man adahu wa ansur man nasarahu wa akhzul man khadalahu. That was the dua after that. Basically, by virtue of the fact that a person is a Muslim, believing in God, by virtue of the fact that a person believes that Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah, and by virtue of the belief that Allah and his Prophet have final authority over everything we have, including our lives and everything. By virtue of the fact that we accept these things, we are bound to accept Bulayat of Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahumma salam ala Muhammad wa alam. Of course, Ali held election when, when people came to him insisting that they wanted Ali to become Khalifa, ruler. Imam Ali said, first he refused, then all the events, I don't want to repeat everything we've already discussed. Finally, he saw that they are not going back. They're going to keep insisting and they want and they're saying that, well, we have offered you our full support and <clears throat> we have given, uh, given, given you the right to, do, to guide us and we accept your authority. To accept, we, we ask you, we beg you to accept becoming our leader. Finally, Imam Ali said he had no other choice. So that was the part that was missing before. There were no people supporting Imam Ali. When Saqifah happened, people did not stand up for Imam Ali. Allah gave him a legitimacy and authority, but people did not abide by it. <clears throat> that's why other people took power. And that's why all the trouble started in Islamic history. Now that people have come forth and offered full support to Imam Ali, salam, he has no choice but to say, okay, yes, I accept. But he said, you must come to the masjid. It will be an open election. Election in terms of, like, if there, for example, Imam Ali came to masjid and someone else showed up and said, okay, I also want to be a candidate. And people chose that person, Imam Ali would say, fine. Fine, that person can be. Allah made me an imam, but I'm not going to force myself upon you. You must all choose, willingly decide to accept me as your imam it should be your decision to accept me you will not give me legitimacy allah has already given me legitimacy but it is your duty to come and support me so that justice can be established on the on the land so that islamic values can be put in place so that the the, the laws of islam can be implemented right all of that can be done but but if people don't accept, Imam Ali is not going to force anyone. That is not Islam. So people did, did exactly that. Imam Ali Islam accepted that. So Imam Ali Islam, five years he ruled. As I mentioned earlier, the Yazid force was forcing Imam Hussein Al Islam to give his bayat and allegiance to forcing Imam Hussain to give allegiance to Yazid. And obviously, Yazid represented the culture of Jahiliyyat for Islam. His, he, his family never accepted Islam willingly. They never believed or practiced Islam in their life. He had shown by his character that he, was, he had no connection to Islam at all. Plus, he was a person who saw that he has power in his hand and he can do with it whatever he wants. So he could plunder, steal, kill people, imprison them, grab their lands, do whatever they want, and also play with Islam and mess up whatever laws and injunctions of Islam the Prophet had brought. The point that he finally decided to just decide there is there's no revelation at all, there's no Quran, there's no Nabuwat or Risala, it was all a game played by Abu Nihum. Hashim, right? To this extent he went, which, which was the, which was at the height of his, he thought it was the height of his glory and success. After killing Imam Hussain al -Islam, he, he became so aggressive that he basically made the announcement, La ibad banu Hashim, as I mentioned earlier. You see that, that 
kind of thing. Now you ask yourself, okay, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the authority, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot have a person like Yazid representing him. <laughs> it cannot be, that cannot happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down his principles, his values, his goals for creation. He created human beings for his obedience. I've created the human being and jinn so that they will worship me. Or worship not like acts of worship. Obey me. Obey my injunctions. Pray to me. Ask me for help. Rely on me. Uh, and follow my uh, commandments. My, my commands. My, my laws. I have, uh, it is something that you know, I have, that's why I've created them. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, has created people and he has told the people that I have authority, which means that they cannot be following someone who does not derive his legitimacy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead, he derives his legitimacy through power. Like some kind of a dynasty or, or maybe by some other illicit means. Sometimes through a, a weak democracy, like in today's terms, like Saqifa happened, weak democracy. Some people gathered, made it look like voting uh, something, uh, uh, kind of a practice of voting or something. And in the end, basically, there was an argument and some people just said, okay, you become the Khalifa and somebody became a Khalifa. Now, against all that, the Holy Prophet appointed Imam Ali. Imam Ali, alayhi salam, had a right for Khilafat, which continued in his family. Imam Ali Maqam, Hazrat Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wassalam, please say the salawat. Allahumma sallam. Muhammad in Walam. He, like any other Imam, impressed upon the people that Allah has chosen the Ahlul Bayt as his uh, Khulafa on the face of this earth. And by virtue of their knowledge, by virtue of their piety, knowledge of Quran, all knowledge that is beneficial for human beings, Ahlul Bayt have knowledge in their possession. They have powers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They use according to the will of God. They are guides for the people. They are, they are morally upright and they are perfect examples to follow. So he's Imam Ali all over Najul Balaga. If you look at it, Imam Ali, he sets his own example. Like one piece I, I recited for you yesterday oh, to Usman ibn Hunayf, how he presents, how he tells him what he should not have done. Then he gives his own example. And I'll briefly give another one tonight, inshallah, where he sets the same thing. That I require from you this. You should not have done this. Look at me. Then he reminds people of the, what is the end of this life? It's in the grave. They will be held accountable. Following Imam Ali means that you become a responsible person. You become, you become, for example, you subscribe to the values of Mawla Amir al muminin It means that you follow the commandments and the ahkam explained by Mawla Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. Please say the salawat. <coughs> The one one part in in uh, Najul Balagha, Imam Ali al-Islam says, uh, describing some of the people, he says, "Kanu qawman min ahl dunya that there were some who who seemed like belonging to this world. Walaysum min ahliha. They were they were in reality they were not from this dunya. They lived in this world like the other people." But they belong to the Akhirat. They lived in this world. A very simple ascetic life. Stood up for Haq. Right? Stood up for Quran. Stood up for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They implemented Allah's uh, laws in their lives. They, they lived their life by, through self-control, piety. Stayed away from wrongdoing. So they were living here physically, but their hearts were in the other life. They acted upon based, they performed their actions based on their basirat, not their physical needs. 
for their desires did not follow their nafs nafs amara they did not fo- follow their uh, animalistic you know desires did not let their body govern their mind they made their aql govern their bodies in fact please say the salawat so they walked around along on this world with other people but they were actually uh living in the akhirat already living in this dunya but actually living there rauna ahl dunya they saw the people of this world you azimuna mauta ajsadhim they would see the people how scared people are of dying so everywhere people the the biggest nightmare people have material people who don't have any faith their biggest worry is death biggest thing source of their anxiety is death rauna ahl dunya you azimuna mauta ajsadhim all the time people are worrying i'm going to die i'm going to something might happen to me these people who actually belong to akhirat whom ashaddu izaman they're more worried about the death of their souls the death of their bodies worried that i will i am killing my soul my soul is dying not my body mauti qulub ahya'ihim they are worried about the deaths of the souls of other people not just themselves they they're worried about the morals decaying in the society the degeneration you know that's happening all around them how people are chasing their material desires not standing up for the oppressed not for example uh living a pious and clean life not living a life that they, that can easily be distinguished from life animal life you know instead they're living their life basically for the same reasons as other animals are living wake up in the morning they all their worries are about what they will eat what they will drink and physical needs and if they have made enough money that's it they have they achieved their goal tonight next morning the same same exercise again they think their their hearts are dying we have been created for another life this is the, not the life we have been created the quran said these people are worse than cattle they're worse than animals because animals don't have intellect to think of these higher values and ideas you know but these are human beings behaving like animals all their worry all their anxiety is about oh, i don't want to die i want to live how do i prolong my life how do i live any any means they can use to enjoy their life by any means whatever they can use whatever means resources by hook or by crook they would want to get anything and everything for themselves for their bodies basically physical pleasures they don't care it, it, it happen at the expense of rights of other people lives of other people damage to other families damage to other people but they wouldn't wouldn't care about that imam ali strongly against that you see when you are saying that you know, yazid should not be in power is because yazid is doing exactly that imprisoning the whole population turning them into slaves blindly following him on the contrary imam ali comes to power right the strict uh basically observation troll over resources public money is worried about the public resources how are they being used and if you look at this uh uh letter from amalia lesa please side salawat allahu salat and the najibullah doesn't mention the name of the person imam ali wrote this letter to is number letter number 41 he mentioned amma ba'd inni kuntu ashraktuka fi amanati i used to trust you with with my, with uh, my amanat which is basically the office i have given you and the wealth the money public money that i put under your control I trusted you with that wa ja'altuka shi'ari you were very close to me apparently this person was either from bani hashim or somehow related to bani hashim alam yakun rajulun min ahli awsaq min ka fi nafsi could not find anyone i could trust more than i could trust you 
مواساتی و معذراتی و ادا الامان اپیرنٹلی دیٹ پرسن ہیڈ ایون فوٹ الانگ سائڈ امام علی ان ون آف دا بیٹلس امام مینشنز دیٹ دین امام سیز آئی یوز ٹو ٹرسٹ یو ود دا امانات دیٹ آئی یوز ٹو گیو یو بفور اینڈ یو ور یو ور ور کیئر فل ود دا امانات ود دا ٹرسٹ پبلک منی اینڈ آل دیٹ فلم مارا آئی زمان اللہ بٹ وین دا ٹائم کیم ون علی علیز انفلوئنس اسٹارٹیڈ ڈکلائننگ وین یو اسٹارٹیڈ سینگ دیٹ پیپل نوسلی امام علی ہیڈ مینی چیلنجز ہی ٹک خلافت ان اے شارٹ پیریڈ آف ٹائم دا بیٹل آف جمل اسٹارٹیڈ امام علی ہیز ناٹ ایون کنسالیڈیٹیڈ از پاور ان گورنمنٹ اے وار اسٹارٹس فورٹی فائیو تھاؤزینڈ پیپل گیدر right outside the city of Basra. Where Imam Ali had to take action. And another battle started. War. This major war of Jamal and then another war of Sifin and then Nehrawan. So obviously people died. Many of his faithful companions died. Imam Ali was losing people who were his true followers and companions and, and supporters. He was losing them. And the enemy was growing in numbers. Because as you know, as the thing goes that people are the, the children of this dunya. They follow their wish, their material desires. They, they are, when they are given incentives, material incentives, they, lo- they, they, they sell their faith for the sake of this dunya, for power, office, position, you know, influence, whatever. You saw that your cousin, which is Ali, right? Time is the the world is turning away from Ali. Adu Qad Harib, and you see that the enemy is advancing every day closer to Medina. In the end of Imam Ali's Khilafat, Imam Ali only had power in the city of Kufa. All other cities had been taken over. Kufa was the only city. And he mentioned in some of the sermons. Well, Adu Qad Harib wa Amanat al Nas Qad Khaziyat. And you saw that the money was now being stolen everywhere. Everyone else is stealing. Every city you look at, public money, treasure is being misused. You saw all this happening around you. That's where you found the opportunity. Okay, up till now, I was waiting. Now is my time. Now is my time. لَبْتَ لِبْنِ عَمِّكَ ذَهْرَ الْمَجِنِ فَفَارَقْتَهُ مَعَ الْمُفَارِقِينَ You abandoned me. Khazaltahum al-Khazalil wa khuntahum, you became among the Kha'inin, Khiyanat. You started basically abusing your authority. Seems like all this fighting you did before was not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, did not do it for Allah. It's as if, as it seems like you, you never received anything from Allah. Like there was no Quran, there was no Prophet, there was nothing. Seems like you had no belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Suddenly you're acting like a disbeliever. You don't f- fear akhirat. You don't feel like you, someone will hold you accountable for <clears throat> transgressions, all the things you, that you do. Please sign a salawat. Then uh, says that for Subhanallah, Amatu Minubil Maad, don't you believe in the hereafter? Life after death. Don't you fear that one day you will be asked how you got this money, where you spent it? This was money Allah gave to the people in authority so that they will practice justice and provide for the needs of widows and orphans and, and the soldiers who stand at the frontier, they, they, they fight the enemies, they defend your land, the administration of cities, all the government things and other things which, which, should, which people need, these services. That's why this money has been paid. Taxes and, and other ways that money has been collected. How come you have no regard for, for that? Sayyidina Salawat. Allahumma Salawat. He says that, you know, if, uh, don't you think, don't think that Ali is saying all that to you because he wants that money for himself. Ali has no wish to get any money 
from people. Then he saw, he said, Wallah, annal, law annal Hassan wal Hussein. If my son Hassan wal Hussein took even a small bit of public money, right? Try to abuse that, I would have done to them just as I do to you. They would not be able to win any favors with me. Abuse power in any way, right? Then Imam threatened him. He said, how come you, you steal all this money and you send this money from Iraq, Hijaz, to deposit this money in your accounts in Hijaz? Does this money belong to your father or your mother? How could you do that? could you do such a thing that take public people's money and send it over there so he, he ordered him to return all this money back in the in the treasury if he does not do that then i as soon as i get power in my hands and i don't know basically apparently after this event for imam ali's power was obviously in material terms declining because muawiyah's forces were advancing and all and and people were not fighting as hard in support of Imam Ali as they did in the beginning of his Khilafat. So he never got an opportunity probably to go after this guy. But Imam Ali was saying that if I get power in my hands, I will fight you with this sword and I will and, and with this sword, I will strike you. This is the sword which Prophet gave it to me. And whoever I struck with the sword has gone straight to hellfire. And will land in the this is the this is the, see the personality of Mawla al-Muttaqeen, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Now compare that with Maviyah's rule. Compare that with even first Khalifa, second Khalifa, especially third Khalifa's time. Time of Muawiyah. And Muawiyah, when he raised his son Yazid, it was very clear. Situation will get much worse than what it is already. Muawiyah had already killed many of the Ashab of Holy Prophet. He had created, fabricated a hadith that basically, uh, what we call, you know, like today for, we have we hear about the burning of Quran in Sweden, right? We hear about these things like Salman Rushdie's book, the book. Muawiyah was doing it day and night. For twenty years, Muawiyah was doing that. Fabricating hadith, funding people who were writing hadith, fake hadith that basically destroyed the image of the Holy Prophet in the eyes of the Muslims. As you know that there was a ban on recording hadith, anyways, till the year almost 90 of Hijri. For 90 years, there was a ban on recording of reporting of hadith, although this ban was not observed by Ahlul Bayt in the Shia despite all their sacrifices and whatever price they had to pay they recorded the hadith but general muslim ummah recording and documentation and recording of hadith basically stopped right after the prophet's death for 90 years and during this 90 years muawiyah comes to power and starts making hadith fake hadith that's what we have in the books of islam today most of the books of islam are filled and packed with these hadith fake hadith basically have nothing to do with the Holy Prophet. They say things that are contrary to Quran, contrary to the ismat of Rasulullah, that he was sinless, that he was infallible, that he was a person chosen by God. It's just like what happened in the history of Christianity and Judaism, where, where false reports were attributed to Moses and Jesus and other prophets before him. You have things in, you'll find in the Old Testament and other books, which, I mean, you cannot attribute to a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no way they would commit such actions. Any prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muawiyah was doing just that. The media was in the hands of the powerful. Hussain could not see that continue because there will be nothing left of Islam. After two generations where people have lost the contact, there's no one living, very few people living now. Among the Ashab of Rasulullah, 50 years after the death of Holy Prophet, how many Ashab were still alive? A few. Some of the Ashab and most of those who were, who were respected in the eyes of people like Habib ibn Mazahir, 
were in the army, small army of Imam Hussein al Islam. But some who were killed, like Maytham al Tamar, Saif al Yamani, and many others who were killed before Imam Hussein or during the uprising of Karbala, they were arrested and put in jail or killed. There were, yes, some Ashab who were alive that joined the other side. So Imam even spoke to them, addressed them on the day of Ashura. Are you not a witness? These are the words spoken by Holy Prophet of Islam about me. Al Hassan of Al Hussein, Sayyida Shabab Ahlil Jannah. Hassan and Hussein, the leaders of the youth of paradise. Don't you bear witness that I am the only living son of daughter of Prophet Muhammad? Zahra, Salamullah Alayah. Allahumma Salaam, Muhammad wa. See the, the how decline of morals happens. People who are present in Ghadir would not step up to the plate, would not come and say, yes, we are bear witness. We were there. Zid was not announced. Muawiyah was not announced as the Khalifa of Rasulullah. These people were not announced as the Khalifa. Rasulullah announced Imam Ali alayhi salam. It is the books of Islam. Hadith, books of Hadith today are full of reports on Ghadir. There is no doubt about this incident. Some Muslims have taken from Hadith books of Islam. Any Encyclopedia Britannica, anywhere you go, there are pages after pages. There are books written in all the research, major research going on in the Western countries. Ghadir is a major subject now. It's everywhere. Cannot be denied. The events happening uh, in and around Ghadir and events that happened after the Prophet's life. Here we have Sayyid Shuhada. Uh, standing in the face of a Yazidi army with 72 followers and perhaps some, some others who joined him. And there were reports go up to some 200 or sometimes 300 also some ziyarat, they mentioned that. Perhaps till the end of the day of Ashura, there were some who joined the camp of Mami Mazlum. One of the key people who joined the camp of Imam salam was Hur ibn Yazid, Riyahi was a commander of the army of Vaidullah Naziyad, 1,000 strong force, and he was commanded to go from Kufa straight to Karbala, stop Imam Hussain al-Islam from advancing towards Kufa. When he was leaving uh, the city of Kufa, he heard something in his ears. He's saying, oh, Hur, go, there's Basharat for you for Jannat. Sharat, I mean, good glad tidings for paradise. The first thing that that uh, Hur felt inside was was that how could I be going towards paradise when I'm le going against Hussein ibn Ali? That was the first. That was the first thing that he occurred. Imagine if it was not Hur, it was someone else. He probably would have found that as a justification, hearing a voice in his ears. Bad tidings, good news, you are going to a paradise, he would have perhaps perceived it as kind of a, a allowance, a permission to go and fight Hussain ibn Ali, which people do sometimes. People take when their conscience is not clear, when they are not on the right side, they use everything in their own favor. Or when he heard this phrase, his, his moral compass was straight. His mind was already clear about Imam Hussain al -Islam. When he heard the voice in his ear, or you are, you are going, Basharat, you are going to paradise. He said, it, I cannot gain paradise by fighting Hussain ibn Ali. There's no way. It cannot mean that. Not mean that. But he advanced. At a point, he, he was face to face with the army of Imam Hussain al -Islam. And again, the, the history records that the, when the time of Salat came, Imam Hussain al -Islam, um, leading the Salat, Imam asked him, would you want to pray separately? He said, no, we will pray behind you. So Hur decided to pray in Jama'at behind Imam Hussain ibn Ali alayhi salam. And then Imam Hussain, between the Salat, he stood up and gave a speech and he showed all the letters he had received from the people of Kufa. Apparently, Hur was not in the city of Kufa when those letters were being sent. So he, he claimed that he had no knowledge of these letters. He was not among the people who wrote his letters. He has no idea who, how those letters were sent or who those letters were sent. And some of the Ashab of Imam Hussain 
with him. They read the letter. They said, "This is what it says." Oh, Hussein, we are asking you to come and join us and establish, you know, your leadership in the city of Kufa. This is the uh, this is the offer of support people of Kufa has given me. That's why I have come. I have not come on my own. So after the salat finished, Imam Hussein wanted to continue on his journey toward Kufa. And that's where Khur came in front of Muhammad Islam and blocked his way and held the reins of his horse. Did not let him advance any further. At that point, Imam Hussain Islam said a few words that have been recorded in history. He said, ummuka ya Khur. May your mother cry for you. Khur, when he heard these words, now in Arabic, Arabic language, this was a major Thing, you know, someone said that to you, he said, consider it an insult. Meaning in a way, it does, it's not abuse. So he would naturally have responded in kind. Instead, he said, Hussein, anyone among the Arabs had said this phrase to me, I would have responded in the same way. But I dare not say that because I know your mother is Fatima the Zahra and I will not open my mouth. So it requires a very high degree of self-control when you are when in front of the, this is not happening in private meeting, happening in front of his army, happening in front of all the companions of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Imam Hussain sakalat ka ummu ka ya or. has so much self-control that he knows his place and the place of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, he, he would dare not allow himself to be led by his his you know, reaction to what Imam al Islam is saying. Instead, he said, I can only say words of praise about your mother. <laughs> only words of praise. At that point, Imam asked him, What do you want? He said, Then I have been ordered not to let you go to Bad Kufa. So then they started moving in a, another direction, which would not get, take him back, but it would not lead to Kufa. So this is the path that. Imam Hussain al-Islam toward Furat, toward Karbala. And when he reached that place on the second of Muharram al-Haram, he asked, what is the name of this place? Because that was finally the place where the letter arrived from Ubaidullah bin Ziyad saying that wherever you find this letter, stop Hussain right there and do not let him take one more step. Imam al-Islam asked, what is this place? They said, Ghazriya, Shatul Farah, different names. Finally, Imam asked if there was another name for this place. Because he knew the name was given to him by his grandfather. The name he was told that this is also called Karbala. And so Hur is, is responsible for some of that. Hur is, Hur is responsible for, for, first of all, creating uh, kind of a situation for Imam Islam. The fear, also not allowing him to go toward Kufa. And also forcing them to stay in this place, right? Also bringing that army with him, which is obviously more in numbers than Imam Hussain's small force. Times kept passing. More forces kept coming. Not many people are coming for Imam Hussain. But a lot of forces, thousands and thousands, 5,000, 3,000, 7,000 strong for armies are coming, arriving on the other side. They have, they have forced Imam Hussain al to move his camp away from the water. So they used to, Imam Hazrat Abbas used to go get water from the river. Finally, on the 7th, water was blocked. They did not allow anyone to go close because they had put 9,000 strong army by the river bank. There was no way to go get water for the camp. There were children in Imam Hussain's camp. There were many children in Imam Hussain's camp. Imam Bakr was one of them. There was Sakina. There was Ali Yasku, were infants who needed water. Their mothers needed water to nurse their children. That night, that fateful night of Ashura came. All night there were cries. There were voices of children crying. Ahura was walking and listening to these. Al-Atash, Al-Atash. Hearing the voice of children crying for water. All night, the morning came, Hur went to Ibn Saad and asked him, will there be a war? It means all these meetings and everything, Ibn Saad had a meeting with Imam Hussain. Imam Hussain had told him to stop, 
but he did not. He insisted Imam Hussein should give bayat, which is not an option. When Hur asked him, the Sahib said, war will happen and in such a way that heads will be cut off and hands and feet will be cut off. This is how the war will happen. And the first arrow was shot by Umar ibn Sa'ad. And when it became certain that this, this conflict will happen, Hur, was his body started shaking. Now, Quran has verses that, you know, sometimes a person is taken over by shaitan, but his conscience is struggling with shaitan. You know, but at some point, if the conscience, if the if the qalb of a person with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he shakes and then he begins to calm down. And he, he recalls the promise of Allah and makes the right decision. There was a shaking in the body of Hur and people came and asked him, you are our commander. If anyone would ask us who is the most bravest person in Arab Arabia, we would take your name. Why do you look like this? Why do you look like this? Hur said, I find myself Arani al Jannati Nar. I see myself between heaven and hell, and I will never forsake heaven for hell. And then he took his son or enslaved some traditions mentioned, and Hur came, and now some traditions mentioned that Hur took his shoes upon his neck. This sign of humility. He covered his eyes, bent his head down, walked toward Imam Hussain. Seemed like Imam Hussain was waiting for Hur for a long time. Just a few words Hur said to Imam Hussain that do I I have what from me what what happened you saw. Is there any chance for me to repent? Which is basically Hur saying that Hussein, I will be the first to give my life for you. Is this going to be a repentance? Is this going to be a tawbah? Agar main apni jaan aap pe fida kar dun, kya ye meri tawbah hai, qubool ho jayegi. Imam Hussain alayhi salam said, Inzil, come down, you are forgiven. Imam Hussain is forgiving uh, Hur on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Hur goes into the battlefield to fight. And when Hur comes down from his horse, injured, he did not think that Imam Hussain would come to his side. And suddenly he felt someone picking up his head. Hur ko mehsus hua, kisi ne aake apne daman mein, apne aagosh mein, Hur ke sar ko liya hai. Aur apne haato se rumal unke sar pe baad rahe. He knew Imam Hussain was very forgiving, but he did not imagine Imam Hussain would come to his janaza and tie the, the wound over his head. Allah <laughs>